I'm Carl Lanning, Brazos River Charter School with This Week in History, uh, specifically the week of uh, October 20th through 26th. Well, let's see, actually we have several big things this week. One, 1797 on the 21st, as a matter of fact, the uh, USS Constitution was launched. Uh, this is the oldest warship afloat anywhere in the world today. It is still afloat at the uh, uh, at the Charlestown uh, Naval Base in uh, just outside of Boston. Uh, it's spectacular if you ever get a chance to visit it. But this week, kind of the big deal is a fellow by the name of Al Capone. On this, on, actually, it'll be the 24th of 1931, Al Capone was sentenced to 11 years on federal tax evasion charges. Uh, he was uh, charged with 22 counts and found guilty on five. It's actually kind of fortunate that the feds were able to get him on five. The uh, prosecutors uh, found out that Capone had likely bribed the jury, which uh, certainly would not be uh, out of line. Uh, so just to be safe, uh, the judge actually did uh, switch the jury from, with one that was on trial that was being held down the, uh, down the hall, uh, one that hadn't been bribed. Uh, and that's how they were able to get him. Uh, Capone's mob career uh, began actually when he was a fairly young man. He was identified as a young man of promise uh, and did various small jobs for the mob. Uh, the, uh, the three distinct scars on uh, his face, here, here, and there was another one kind of on the, on the neck, uh, came when he was 18 years old. He was working as a bartender slash bouncer at a mob-owned bar. Um, a mobster came in with his girlfriend and his sister, and apparently Al was kind of smitten with the sister. And so he kept trying to flirt with her throughout the night. Uh, finally, she got tired of it, said something to her brother. Her brother said something to Al, and Al tried to play it off by making, say the only reason he was uh, uh, flirting with her was because and he men made a rather crude remark about her posterior. Uh, he and Al got into a fight, and the three scars were applied with the mobster's knife, uh, pocket knife at that. Uh, of course, Al then later went to Chicago, which is where he really made his name. Uh, you know, during the 1920s, between uh, his prohibition era, of course, between uh, his alcohol business, prostitution, and illegal gambling, in today's dollars, the man was bringing in a gross income of about one and a half billion dollars a year. Uh, when he was sentenced, though, to go to prison, uh, the first prison that he was sent to was eh, outside of Atlanta. I believe it's called Eastern State. This was his cell. Uh, he lived a very comfortable life. Uh, he basically was still able to run his criminal empire from inside the prison. Uh, local legend has it that even the warden would occasionally give him a furlough so that he could go to a local tavern. We have no idea whether that's actually true or not, but that's the local legend. Uh, the feds tired of this, they, they couldn't let this go, and so they decided to uh, ship Mr. Capone to a brand new open federal facility called Alcatraz. Uh, while he was at Alcatraz, he learned that even his considerable reach would do him no good here. Uh, chow time came, he went to the head of the line as he was accustomed to doing. A Texas bank robber, who I believe also had murdered the bank guard on his way out, he was serving a life sentence there, asked Al, what the hell do you think you're doing, Wop? Al said, you know who I am? The Texan said, yeah, I know who you are, and I'll tell people I know who you were unless you get your ass to the back of the line. Kind of went downhill from there for Al. Uh, he started entertaining the prisoners by playing the banjo. Uh, Capone served six and a half years before being transferred to a mental institution in Baltimore. He was suffering from syphilis that he had contracted many years before and the disease was starting to run its course. Uh, he was eventually released, went to Florida, and spent his remaining years with his wife. He died in 1947. Now there is an interesting legend that's connected with uh, Capone and it's a little questionable about whether it ever actually happened or not. This is Al Capone's uh, armored limousine. The legend is that when World War II broke out, that the Secret Service was even more concerned than ever about uh, the president's safety. 
and that he did not have an armored car. So that since Al's was supposedly still in storage, they just borrowed it, it was modified a little bit, and for a brief period of time it was FDR's armored limousine. We really can't verify whether that story is true or not. Um, it kind of seems like maybe it's not, but like I said, it, it's really hard to verify one way or the other. Uh, but too bad, because if that were the case, that may have been the only good thing to ever come of Al Capone's life. Well, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week for next week's installment of This Week in History.